all right guys we are talking turkey tail today and i have three blocks with some beautiful turkey tail mushrooms on them here that are all ready to pick and i brought them outside because the natural light's always better i want you guys to be able to see what i'm going to do here and i want to talk a little bit about growing these and uh, some tricks that i've learned over the years and we're going to also pick these off and we're going to see what our weight in mushrooms is and then i'm also going to weigh the blocks because uh, i want to show you guys over time how efficient this turkey tail mycelium is at breaking down this sawdust these blocks started out around six pounds and once we pick the mushrooms off we'll weigh them again but basically the turkey tail mycelium is super efficient at breaking down the sawdust and converting it to mushroom tissue so the yield is pretty good with these actually and we're getting up to like four flushes um, this strain is from mycelium emporium and this is one I'm playing with lately and uh, seems to be a pretty good strain uh, it's grown some beautiful mushrooms uh, this is their wild uh, turkey tail strain it's a wild clone and uh, like I said it's you guys can see it's growing some some beautiful nice fan shaped caps for us and we're getting pretty good conversions up to four flushes actually four separate flushes of mushrooms with this strain um, so pretty pretty impressed with it so far that's one cool thing about this hobby is that uh, even working with the same species different strains can behave uh, quite a bit differently from uh, from one another so it's always fun playing with different strains of the same species and seeing what which ones work best with your methods these are sawdust blocks and filter patch bags and these were made with the same method uh, I showed you in my pasteurized fuel pellet tech and uh, if you guys want to watch that video it's on the channel um, it's the first video we ever made actually and uh, shows you exactly how to make these blocks but anyway um, so what I do with the turkey tail is once they're fully colonized uh, that means the mycelium has completely covered the sawdust and the whole block is white. Uh, what they do is they start to, it's called popcorning, and you can see this dense white mushroom tissue that starts to form. And that's the, that's just dense bundles of mycelium, it's called popcorning. And shiitake do this too, um, but the, uh, the turkey tails start to do it as well. And as soon as they do that, um, basically I take the top of the filter patch bag and I fold it back as tight as I can get it. I kind of pinch those gussets in and I fold the top back and I just tape it on with, uh, with a piece of packing tape back here. And I try and get as tight, tight as you can because that helps with, uh, with the cropping. Um, because what, uh, what I do to actually fruit the mushrooms is I cut, I take an X-Acto knife and cut horizontal slits in the bag. So after I folded the top back and taped it down really tight, I cut horizontal slits. And what I've learned is I tried vertical slits. Um, I tried just cutting the whole top of the bag off, exposing the whole top of the mycelium. Um, I tried quite a few different methods. It didn't work as good. And basically I settled on this one. Uh, when you cut the top right off the bag, um, you get a bunch of dense little clusters of small mushrooms and uh, they're really hard to pick. You end up ripping off a bunch of substrate when you go to pick them. Um, the vertical slits worked well too, um, but the fruit bodies weren't as normally shaped as they are here. Um, they kind of were, were denser. Um, they didn't fan out as much and they just didn't... Uh, didn't turn out as nice as they do with the horizontal slits so you can see on each of the sides I'm making a horizontal slit two there and uh, two on the front um, this one I actually taped off up top here because the bag was kind of loose up here and what happens when the bag is loose against your slit I found is that you get like dense mushroom tissue um, attached to your fruit bodies behind the plastic so when you go to pick your fruits off uh, you accidentally you, you actually rip some of the substrate off the block when you go to pick them so what I've learned is uh, basically you want to cut horizontal slits that's going to give you your best mushrooms and I've tried this with a couple different strains and it's been the same and um, also you want to uh, 
only cut the slits where the bag, the plastic is very tight to the block. So if you get an area like over here where it got kind of kind of loose and uh, there was some space between the, the bag and your sawdust block, all you do is take some packing tape and tape that over. And that'll keep the mushrooms from fruiting there. Um, they're going to keep fruiting wherever they, they have exposed air. Let me know what you guys think. If you guys have grown different strains and have a different cropping method, let me know in the comments. I would love to know and talk with you guys about it. And right now... Uh, we're going to get picking. We're going to pick these off and uh, we're going to weigh them and see what kind of yield we get off. Uh, we just have three blocks here. This is a small grow, but you guys can see, uh, I'll start right here. You guys can see how easy these rip off when you do this uh, slip method. See, really easy cropping. Um, they just break off nice and easy from your block. You even have some growing out the filter patch here. Um, we try to avoid that if we can, but eventually that mycelium will creep to your filter patch usually. And uh, we got a nice little turkey tail mushroom growing right here out of the filter patch. So we can pick that off as well. No biggie. And I'm just going to keep going here. We're going to pick all these off and then we'll check the weight. <laughs> check this out. This is one big ribbon of turkey tail that was growing all the way around that one block. And it just picked right off uh, with those nice tight horizontal slits. So we'll put that in our calendar here. And you can see we got 11 and a half ounces of uh, turkey tail off of just three blocks, which that isn't too bad. That's the second flush, like I said. And uh, we should get two more flushes off these blocks. Weigh one of our blocks here real quick just to see where we're at. Okay, so these blocks started out around six pounds. And you can see we're down to four pounds, three ounces right now. So basically all that wood uh, that uh, over a pound, a pound and a half of wood has been converted into CO2 and mushrooms. So we'll wait, we'll keep weighing them on the third and fourth flushes and see how light these end up getting. But uh, I know by experience that that uh, basically these turkey tail are so efficient that there's nothing left of these things uh, when they're all done. It's basically like a giant packing peanut, which is pretty cool. So now I'm gonna uh, take you down in the basement and we'll talk about uh, the environment we're growing these in. Basically we're doing these in a mono tub and my, uh, my buddy Adam figured out a really cool way to grow these that works really well it's super easy and uh, it also keeps the mold down so we'll go down the basement and uh, we'll get these in the dehydrator and we'll talk about it all right so we're down in the basement here and this is a setup we're growing these guys in super simple it's just a automated mono tub setup and uh, what i've done is just taken uh this is just a sterilite clear plastic tub from walmart you know these are about 10 12 bucks and uh, I've just taken a hole saw and uh, it's about a probably inch and three quarter, two inch hole saw and taking a hole out one in each end, another one here and then also here on both sides. And uh, what that does is having the holes allow some airflow into your tub because all mushrooms need a little bit of airflow. Some need more than others. Um, so you can kind of control how much air is going in and out of your tub a couple different ways. You can definitely adjust your lid. Like a lot of times I'll cock it diagonal like that to allow some air in. And you can kind of control that by how open you have it. But you can also control it with these holes. And uh, what this is here is this is just polyfill. It's just cheap. Uh, polyfill like they use to stuff pillows and stuffed animals and stuff and you can get this in a big bag at uh, like Walmart or a craft store and you can put uh, little balls of the polyfill in your holes to kind of control the airflow so if your mushrooms right inside the hole look like they're turning yellow or browning uh, they're probably getting too dry. You can uh, put a little polyfill in the hole to, to keep as much airflow from going in. You need to learn to read your mushrooms, and that just takes time. 
Um, it's, it's just time and experience. Um, you need to learn uh, when they're happy, when they're not, when they're getting a little too dry. And usually, uh, like with the turkey tail and a lot of other mushrooms, they'll start to kind of yellow and brown on the edges if they're getting too dry. And that's when you want to, you know, maybe close your lid a little more or uh, get some polyfill into your uh into your holes to control that now i got a turkey tail block in there that's just starting to pin it's a little behind the others um so in our hole here uh we just have a uh, this is just an ultrasonic humidifier and all i've done here and this is actually adding our moisture to the mono tub so what i've done here is i've just taken a uh, pvc fitting and just hot glued it onto the top of this ultrasonic and then slide this this way pull this hose this hose is just a piece of plastic like pool hose and that is just friction fit into the pvc fitting there and that's just feeding the ultrasonic humidity right into the tub and you can see i have this turned off right now but uh when you fire this up you'll see there it's running obviously you can see the mist and this will this will fog your tub right up and there's lots of different ways you can do this um a lot of people will um use like a repeat cycle timer and um they'll run it you know maybe half hour on half hour off but what adam figured out is you don't really have to maintain consistent humidity in your mono tub uh definitely with these turkey tail and this this will work for other mushrooms too like oyster shiitake lion's mane what you can do instead of having your humidifier constantly kicking on and off which is a, what a lot of people do you know like 15 minutes on 15 minutes off 30 minutes on 30 minutes off um is you can set a timer like i have this one set here and uh, basically you can see I have it set to just run for three hours in the afternoon. And what that does is it just completely floods this mono tub with uh, visible mist from the ultrasonic. And it gives them a lot of moisture all at once. And then it shuts off. And then for the rest of the day, it's just drying out. It's slowly drying out. And what that does is it helps you control mold. Because uh, one problem with, um, with using these monotubs is that uh, they also are really good at growing mold, especially if you have consistent humidity. Um, mold really requires consistent, humid, moist conditions to grow. And the mushrooms really don't. Um, they can take a they can take a hit, you know, like a nice watering, and then they can dry out for a while, and they'll still grow normally as long as you hit them again um, with some more moisture before you get too dry. So this technique that Adam figured out by basically flooding your mono tub with moisture and then letting it slowly dry out through the rest of the day, um, it really controls the mold growth. And this tub's been running for about three weeks here with um i haven't cleaned it out at all and that's probably a little too long i would still recommend uh you know spraying it down with some rubbing alcohol and wiping it out you know every couple weeks but i wanted to let it run just as an experiment and uh it's, like i said it's been running about three weeks and there's no uh no visible black mold growth here and so we're gonna put our turkey tail blocks that we just picked off back in here and we'll get them cropping again and uh these are the ones we just picked off. These are our turkey tail from our blocks outside there. And we're going to load these up into the um, our dehydrator. Basically, just pull some trays, make a little space. And uh, we just line our turkey tail up on here. And I'm going to dry these at right around 100 degrees. Basically, just get them spaced out on your tray uh, you can pack them pretty tight you just don't want them touching that's the main thing um, and then uh, we uh, let me get some light here we'll kick it on to right there is about 100 degrees plug her in and we're running 
So we're gonna let these uh, turkey tail go in the dehydrator for a while. You basically wanna dry them out until they're crispy and you can snap them basically like a potato chip. And we'll probably end up making some extract out of these, maybe tincture tea. And uh, if you guys are interested in learning more about extracts or maybe purchasing extracts and not making your own, uh, check out Adam's Etsy site. He's uh, Cold Brook Mushrooms on Etsy. He's got a bunch of awesome extracts for sale. And uh, I know he makes really good stuff. So we'll let these go for a while and uh, we'll be back.